Distinguished Adventurers, welcome to a new show. I know there's been a lot of them this week. I'm super excited about this one. Welcome to Paint and Slay. Which you have to say that way yes. because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> because it is. It's required. <laughs> to paint and slay. Everyone's got to get that growl in their voice. Um, I'm Lauren. I'm the, commun uh, the content coordinator here at Idle Champions. And with me is a wonderful person who is newer to the Idle Champions family, but definitely not new to painting minis. V, would you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I am V Muse. I'm the partner manager at uh, Codename Entertainment, but I'm also known as the Crafting Muse on Twitch as well as over on YouTube, where for quite a few years now, oh my goodness, I've been showing people how to paint minis and miniature terrain and things like that. And I am so excited that we're going to get to do mini painting here together. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so much fun. Uh, so yeah, so first episode of Paint and Slate, and I am so in for it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm super excited. It was it's been fun working on putting the show together for the for the last couple of weeks because every once in a while I'm like, I get to play with minis and paints and I'm finally gonna learn how to do the thing that I've kind of been just doing every once in a while and not necessarily knowing what I'm doing. But so now I'm gonna learn and I'm excited. Um, we picked uh, for the first two episodes since, you know, we want to be able to relax and have some fun. We're doing the Mike and it adult who came out recently. Ooh, there's the, there's the there set. Go. I've, I've got mine. I got Looking both of mine set up here. Reading the packaging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is from WizKids, D&D Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures line. Um, it comes in a pack of two usual MSRPs, $4.99. These are always great, especially if you're new to painting. And a lot of what I'm gonna be talking about is going to be directed towards beginners with some tips for those of you who might be more advanced for reasons. Um, <laughs> Uh, but basically, these are always great for people who are just starting out and they want an affordable way to jump into mini painting and have a couple of options instead of, you know, spending a lot of the big bucks. Then, you know, maybe things might be something where, oh, I didn't enjoy that painting so much. So it just helps where, OK, someone just put in a name that is going to be one of the miniatures names. Uh, but these are a great <laughs> option. <laughs> I just saw it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are a great option for beginners. So I'm going to open this up. You can see what's going on here. Front is this. The back will always have pictures of the creatures or the um, PC style miniatures. So you can kind of get ideas on how to paint it. Uh, I actually, we have from the game itself right there, mm -hmm. an image of the Mike and Id. Uh, so luckily you can see we got a little marching order going on here. Um, we have a nice little color palette going on. We're going to have some fun with this. So you pop it open. This is in its blister, as it's called. You pop it open, and inside you'll see it's a little clamshell effect. You don't need this. This goes in the garbage now. You can save this oops, if you want that for reference. So I'm going to, this is what I always do if I just throw them off to the side. And then you get this other blister, which is the front one. I'm going to give you a little painting tip here. Save these, because these are really great for using as many palettes for mixing paints and everything like that. And it's a nice little reduce, reuse, recycle trick. Um, so you can save those if you so choose. And then you get two little black discs, which we'll address next episode. Uh, so put them in a safe place for now. And you'll get two minis, Yay. micro minis, um, of the Mike and adults, just like this. Now, Lauren already has herself prepped like a good little student. What I do, especially for beginners, for a mini holder, because you can opt to purchase one later on down the line if you're enjoying mini painting and you want to start investing in supplies. Fantastic. However, I highly recommend taking an old pill bottle, empty. I mean, this one's empty. There's nothing in here. Empty pill bottle. Keep the cap on top. Put some blue tack on top. And then all you have to do is just squish your mini. And now you have a nice little affordable holder for your miniature. I also find if you have things like arthritis or carpal tunnel, these larger bottles sit nicely in your hand to make it more comfortable on your hands. That's another little side tip there. So I'm going to put my two minis onto my two separate, really classy mini painting holders. <laughs> I mean, hey, I'm I'm impressed at least that you've got the one that's the all black. I've just got the old style. Yes, right. Luke, the amber my, ones. My my partner and I are in our 40s, and yes, we have multiple of these these really swanky pill yeah, bottles. Yeah, it's a thing. Yeah. You start collecting them. Uh, but oh, now we have our two minis here ready to go, and we're actually going to be doing sort of an assembly line process as we're painting one mini. The other one's going to be off to the side drying. So just a little fun back and forth thing. I find it really helps if you're painting these in sets. It helps to sort of do 
each at the same time. So that way it's not you're waiting between time and then that other one's kind of sitting there just waiting for their turn. And like, when are you gonna finish me? Uh, so we'll, going back, we'll be going back and forth with them. Uh, supply wise, along with our pill bottle setup, I tend to use paper plates. However, if you have things like a uh, wet palette or just one of those old school uh, paint palettes, you know, little plastic, white plastic ones that have the wells in them, you can use that too. For me personally, I just like using these because they're quick and easy for me. And also I can test paints ahead of time and as they dry, the paint color will still be there. So that mm -hmm. if I wanna go back in and recreate the color, I have my reference right there on the paint palette. So that's a little trick on that end for me as to why I like to use the the paper plates. It's gonna say the paper palette's close. Uh, you're also gonna to wanna to make sure you have, I do two waters. One is going to be for thinning out paints. The other one is for rinsing your brushes. Reason why you don't want your thinning paints being mixed with your rinsing brush water is because this is gonna start collecting the pigments in the sludge from all the paints. And when you're starting to play around with different colors, you can get trace pigments pulled into paints as you're thinning them. And then what was supposed to be a nice tan color suddenly looks peach. <laughs> mm. So that's why you wanna make sure you have two separate ones. Um, color wise, we're gonna be playing with some very simple colors today. And that's the other thing I'm gonna try and do as we're just getting into things. We're gonna be working with more basic colors. I'm gonna be showing you mixing and things like that too, because really when it comes to paints, you technically only need five paints to start out, technically. You can start out with black, white, red, blue, yellow. And then from there, start mixing your colors from all of those. Uh, but in some cases, I'm like, ah, it's, it's honestly, it's easier just to start with brown because sometimes brown can be a little interesting to mix. Uh, so we have black, white, brown, and red. Now I am using Vallejo paints, as is Lauren. That does not mean you have to use Vallejo paints. You can use whichever paints you want to. As you can see, Lauren has the game color. I have the model colors but still yep. we're gonna end up with similar results. Uh, but sure. if you have, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say for those that want to follow along, um, so you don't have to paint along, but if you would like to, the specific supplies that we are recommending to uh, take care of this is actually up in our Discord. We have a whole channel that is just for paint and slay. It has the list of the supplies that uh, I will be using. So if you want to see a beginner using the same supplies that we are recommending you use, uh, you can go to our Discord, discord.gg slash idle champions. Um, I also have the list here, so we'll be keeping uh, keeping up with what we're gonna be using. But if you have any questions, you can certainly ask. We actually have our wonderful moderator, Martin, in chat, who's gonna be pulling those questions. So uh, if you put it in chat, we don't address it immediately. Uh, we're probably both hardcore painting, but mm -hmm. I We'll be keeping an eye on that. <laughs> and certainly um, V is going to have multiple suggestions for other things that you can use. And if you're not painting along and you just want to hang out and ask questions and learn about all of the wonderful world of mini painting, that's great. And uh, before we keep going, I will say I did see someone in chat asking about, well, uh, yes, here we go. Oh, wait for it some. So far, yeah. the talk is all about painting. But where there'll be, will there be some slaying on stream, or is the show's title misleading? <gasps> oh, well, we came prepared. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you happen to have that game I, open? Oh, that that game, that particular game. Yeah, that game that we that, play. Oh, that game, that game that yeah. has something to do with this game. That yeah. That game. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. There we go. <laughs> so, um, I am sitting here on one of the mo most recent updates to the game, one of the most recent adventures that came out. This is the Grand Tour Neutral No More Free Play. And I'm sitting here on um, basically a boss level because this is where you can find, in uh, as well as some other places, there they are, the mic. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. Now, now my my uh, formation here has kind of leveled up quite a bit, so they're dying pretty quickly. But mm -hmm. if you're looking to slay along with us, you can be playing the neutral no more in the Grand Tour. Um, let me show you real quick where to find this on the world map, and then we will go back to painting minis. Nice. Um, so it's in Grand Tour 14. You will need to have unlocked a couple of other adventures in order to get to it. If you're sitting here on the Sword Coast, come down here to the Underdark. And you'll see uh, a couple things here. And you'll find Neutral No More down in uh, amongst the free plays. I still have some variants I got to take care of. I'll do those <laughs> later. But that's where you can find it. And then you'll find uh, at least 
specifically the Mike and an adult that we're referencing, although I think there's some Mike and it's elsewhere, is one of the big boss creatures in this level. Uh, they come up in specific places, and yeah, now now I'll let my party continue forward, and I will let V continue forward with oh, cool. painting our fun minis. Wait, who's that right now? I'm sorry, I got I got distracted by the game because that's another cool monster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the Herazu. So Ooh. there's, uh, this is all part of the uh, Grand Tour right now. There's a bunch of adventurers that are dealing with the, um, some of the old, old adventures. And I think this is specifically um, Rage of Demons. It's it's dealing with um, a whole bunch of fiends who have invaded the Underdark. And there's, um, there's some drow in there. And there's lots of uh, big giant spiders, which uh, I believe spiders are on the menu for it later. Mm -hmm. There's there's a lot of fun <laughs> things coming up. So so yeah, uh, we we have some some other big guys there. But for today, I was super excited to do the Mike and it's because they're so Me colorful. Me too. So yeah, we're going to be doing the two Mykonids, uh, which means it doesn't matter which one because both are going to have similar approaches anyways, but we're going to paint one to look like our buddy here. I'm going to start calling this Mike. We're going to paint one to look like Mike. Hi, Mike. And the other one, uh, I wanted to have some fun and sort of give it a little, like those little mushrooms, the toadstool mushrooms that have the red cap and like little white dots. Um, so that one I'm going to paint artist riff. Uh, as that variation. Because one thing I love to do with minis is people sometimes worry that it has to look like the art. It doesn't mm. have to look like the art. You can make it look like your own. Uh, so I thought it'd be fun to show you how you can get very different results with the same, technically same, they're just different poses, miniature. Uh, so pick I'm whichever one you want. I'm Ooh. gonna stop you there for a sec second. Uh, looks like our stream is having some issues. Oh, There's dear. a lot of glitching going on. Um, so oh. normally I would try to do this in the backstage chat, but it looks like, hey. okay. uh, it's the broadcast is buffering and freezing. Oh, okay. Uh, you might need to switch to a slightly lower resolution. That's what I am thinking. And I will let the chat know. Hang tight. We're... I'm also, cause we have had the flooding issues from the hurricane oh, and yeah. the table has been interesting. Mm. So let me just check here and bump this down a few and see if that helps. <laughs> also, I like who put Briv into the stream formation. His unnatural haste stream is, uh, skips stream frames. Do, do, do. I oh, like sorry about that. My apologies. Let's see if that helps. Oh no. Let's give it a refresh. Let me check here. See if that is better. New stream. Who dis? Are New we good? Stream. We're working on it. Uh oh. Oh. Let's give it a refresh and see. Um, how much of a, a delay do you have on the stream? Not much. Okay. We might have to reboot this. Let me see here. It's looking a lot better. It's just very yeah. far behind, but it does look a lot better. Okay. All right, if it's looking better then. Yeah, because at this point, it's uh, it's still at the point where you're talking about how the second one you're going to make look like mushrooms. Oh, OK. It's I don't know why it's so far behind. Why is it so far behind? I don't know. Let me but check my there, again. Chat's going to get to this point and be like, what are you talking about? What are you two talking about and why? <laughs> I don't understand. But it at least on my screen, it's looking a lot better. OK, great. Okay. Right, I'm going to. I'm going to ask. Are we doing okay? Are we <laughs> doing okay? And now the, the huge lag is going okay, is is going to is gonna be the problem, but. Yeah, I'm looking to see why it is lagging so much. My apologies, folks. Working much better, better after I turned off the low latency setting. All right, people are saying that the refresh is helping. Hey, okay. refresh. Excellent, excellent. Okay. We good? I I think I'm I'm getting a lot of people saying that it's better. I so think you better? have fixed the issue. Okay. It looks good to me. Okay. Um <laughs> we're hearing I'm I'm hearing from some of the mods. Mm. And it looks good to me now. No buffering. We see you. Yay. Excellent. Okay. So unfortunately, uh my area was one of the areas that got some flooding issues and I know that they've been fixing things, so 
I have a feeling that the cable provider right now cannot uh, be handling as much as it usually does. So hopefully the drop is getting us to where we need to be. Yeah. Uh, and keep moving forward. Keep moving Excellent. forward. Excellent. Okay, so basically, which if you're painting along, pick whichever one you want. And we're going to start painting the first one all black. And yes, you can get a certain song stuck in your head because we're going to paint it black. And well, what I'm going to I'm going to grab the one that's on the screen. I'm going to grab the the cool. that one. We'll start okay. there. Excellent. All right. Yeah. So I'm going to use a number three brush. Uh, the two different brands I've recommended are either the Mod Podge Hobby Detail Brushes or the Royal and Langnickel. Uh, my Royal and Langnickel is nice and new, so I'm going to start with that one. Uh, but you want to get your black paint. And sometimes you need to shake your paints. It happens. Paints separate. You need to make sure. And you just need a little bit. A little will go a long way, and you can always put more paint on your brush as well. Ooh, I got excited. I, you have a lot? <laughs> I might have used a little more than I needed to, but that's okay. <laughs> How's the stream looking on the other end, too? Uh... I just want to make sure, because I'm getting some notifications here. Yeah, uh, it looks good to me. It's just there's yeah. a giant delay. How does the stream look now? But, like, you know, if there's a yeah. giant delay okay. between what we're doing and what the stream as long as it looks good and sounds good, I That's can deal with concern. us being being Behind. a minute or two in the future. I mean. Okay. All right. Then uh, I'm going to go in and start literally just put a little bit on the tip of your brush. You don't want to load your brush all the way up because that starts making things get funky. So you just put a little bit of tip on the tip of the brush of the paint and go in. And I tend to start at the top and work my way down to the bottom. Okay. And you're just going to be able to paint right onto these minis because they already come primed. There are now some for, minis that you might have to prime ahead of time. For for those of us that are new to mini painting, mm -hmm. what does priming mean? Priming means you're putting a layer of a very specific paint onto the miniature because these miniatures are plastic that when you go in and you go to paint the mini, it helps to have a layer of primer on your paint on your mini because then the paint will stick better to the miniature. You can okay. go in and try to paint without a primer on it, but you may run the risk of it flaking or not adhering properly. And do most minis that you're going to buy at, say, a hobby shop or a store or even just um, online, are most of them going to come primed? Or is that the kind of no, thing you need to watch out that's for? That's something you need to make sure you pay attention to the packaging to see what they say. Um, they will specifically say on the packaging, or they should, whether you will need to prime them if they come primed ahead of time or not. Uh, so that is something that WizKids specifically does. They will yes. prime their miniatures ahead of time. And the other thing you want to keep an eye out for is Ooh. the paint consistency. Uh, and I always revert to talking about foods when I do this. And if you get hungry, my apologies, but... It's just a lot easier to say the food consistency <laughs> of universal things uh, than other things we'd be like, I'm not sure what that means. So if you were to put the paint onto your plate and it's like toothpaste, then you want to thin it out with the fresh water uh, until it's about the consistency of maple syrup. And once you get it to that consistency, mm. then it'll go more smoothly over the mini itself. If it comes out, like maple syrup ahead of time, which mine does because my black for some reason is a little bit thinner, um, then you don't need to thin the paint. If your paint comes out super thin, then you can use that as a new glaze or you can use it for washes. <laughs> um, sometimes you might find that happens that sometimes that or call the company from where you bought the paint and let them know, hey, I got a paint, but it's looking a heck of a lot more like a glaze or a wash. Um, unfortunately, I don't have really have a good tip for you. If the paint comes out too thin, I just will repurpose the paints that I have to do something else. And, oh, I know what just happened with my cable. Uh-oh. All the kids came home from school. Ah. <laughs> Hi, kids. Welcome. Every, Welcome to Mini Painting. Everyone was dropping on, was jumping onto the internet and there was a poll and that's what's going on. I'm like, what is happening? Because suddenly I am back up to where my numbers usually are. 
Yay. Yay. Yep. And I'm hearing from chat that things are a lot better. So that is much good. better. Okay. Sorry about that. Now we're folks. painting the whole thing black or are we, we are just doing... painting the whole thing black. The whole thing. All the whole right. Thing black because what we're going to do with this one, since we're going to make it look like our buddy Mike on the side. Um, and yes, Mike is what the name will be. Um, I want to use this technique that I like to show, especially to beginning painters. And I call it my shadow layers. Now, those of you who are more experienced with miniature painting, um, it may remind you of Zenithal lighting. It may remind you of OSL, um, but it's actually a technique that I have picked up when I was younger from oil painting called chiaro scuro, and it basically Ooh, say you're that, say that again, say it again, chiaro scuro, um, which basically you're playing with the lights and the darks. So unlike those other two painting techniques, where it's a little bit more focused and you're playing in or you're factoring in where the light is coming from to make your paints look a certain way. This is something you do to the entire thing to help bring out uh, more details. And because it has like this fun, if you look over here, Mike has this fun like watercolory look to it. I thought yeah. it'd be fun to use this to then apply um, the washes on top. So this one's gonna have a fun little thing going on here. And actually, these new lights that I got are drying out my paint a little bit. So if you find your paints drying out a little bit faster, you can always go in and add a little bit of more water to it like I just did. Um, so I just need to thin my paints out more. When it gets too thick, you notice that your brush is dragging and it's not flowing over the miniature. That's where you need to thin your paint out a little bit too as well. That's um, the moment where you need to have a little bit of zen. Everything needs exactly. to just flow. And Everything needs to, to just to flow. Just nice and over. It's it's nice in this moment uh, to just have to think about painting the whole thing black because mm -hmm. I do see that uh, there's going to be a lot of crevices and and uh -huh. folds in these myconids, and that's going to be both really cool to look at and probably a little challenging to paint. So right uh -huh. now I'm just kind of enjoying the fact that I I I don't need to. Don't need to worry about details. I just need to get into all the places. Yep, you can even poke at it if you want to, but that's the other reason why I thought doing these shadow layers would be fun because of all these great little details that are on these two minis. Um, it'll make it a little bit more of a beginner friendly approach instead of trying to go back in and bring out every single detail uh, with brush and paint using a fine detailed brush. This is sort of a different approach to it. Uh, as so, a beginner, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's that's what I figured. So basically what we'll do is we're going to paint it all black. The other thing you find with black is as you're painting along, every so often as things dry and the flare back of the paint itself being wet, as it starts to dry and mattify, you'll notice, this is why I'm saying it right up here, there's a little patch that I missed because ah. it looked like it was just gloss and really, no, that was a white spot. Uh, so you may find you have to go back every so often, but wait for the paint to dry. If you try to go in and fix your paints while they're still damp or uh, not fully dry, you can actually lift the paint back off using a uh, wet paintbrush. So Ooh. let it dry first before you try and go back and get those little spots. If it's been like a minute since you've gone over that area. Um, so, and uh, Medusta, I see the tip, but the problem is I have other things to my side. So that's why my palette is a crossbody. Plus, I can see it from this angle. I have other things happening behind the scenes. Yeah, sadly, those of us. Uh, so the what came up in chat is a good point for everybody, which is mm -hmm. to think about your posture, to think about stretching, to think about where you're putting your stuff, yes. because you can end up kind of hunched <laughs> over. Yeah. Now, we, we have pretty nice setups, but we don't necessarily have optimal setups because we have microphones and cameras Camera. and <laughs> other things going on uh, but we're doing our best and yep. definitely it is a very good idea to remember every yes. once in a while to stretch and, and just yeah absolutely yeah there'll even be points where i say i need to pull this out of frame because i want to bring it closer to my body and be comfortable yeah um, and actually i'm going to take a moment to stretch and i'm going to pull do. up some questions from chat oh i'd love to have some questions from the chat Oh, I'm I'm being told that uh, you can see a mini version of me in another place of me. I'm going to. I think I'm going to fix that. Of you in another place of you. How does that look? Yeah. Oh, I can fix that. Yeah. Okay. Give me a sec. I mean, don't you want mini me and regular me? Don't you want just me all the time? Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
I but I I think that that should probably help and we can we can hopefully fix that. Uh let's see. We can see mini paint box. Mini paint uh -oh. box. I'm, I'm being cool. informed by our our producer and moderator Martin, who is awesome, and we thank you. Um, in the so bottom right corner of I my face. Oh, there we there go. We go. Hey. All right. It just you. means I'm gonna have to adjust the stream number one. Ta da! <laughs> this is yeah. This is the first time doing this <laughs> setup for me, so it's <laughs> appreciate the patience. Yep. Yep. There yep. Yep. Ta da! Um, All better. Stretchy. All better. Okay, we do have a couple of fun questions from Great. chat. Um, Alan Durrell, this mm -hmm. is a neat idea. I remember when we used small blue plastic holding scissors from the hospital my mom uh, worked at to hold the figurines. Oh, Ooh, cool. Small blue plastic holding scissors. That is... Like clamps or something. Like, that... Yeah, like the pincher clamps type of thing is what I'm thinking. That is yeah. fun. And Star Chaser 43 says, so are those are those bottles beholders? <laughs> I would clap, but I'm holding a wet mini. Mm-hmm. Um Excalibur Storm says you have exceptional skills, very good work. Oh, we've just started. Do you have a place where I can you. find the type of colors and uh they're not edible paints? I don't think they're edible. I would no, not eat these paints. No. I'm probably reading that wrong. Uh, but that's a very good question about where can you find what we're using. Go to our Discord and mm -hmm. all of the stuff that we are using to paint these minis are listed. We'll be keeping that list updated every single week as we uh, move on to other minis or other uh, techniques and other things. So come to discord.gg slash idle champions. And there is a, um, there is a channel that is specifically for paint and slay and uh, you can see all of the stuff that we are using and doing and uh, you can paint along with us and we'll let people know in advance what we're doing so that you uh, mm -hmm. will have the chance to grab that in advance exactly and, and i just wanted to make sure i finished these feet i yes. got all the feetsies get the feet i don't and... i don't have the best camera for this this is why <laughs> uh we're watching these camera um but yeah but as you can see you start to make okay. some progress here I think and... I got. I'm sure, be, I'm sure there'll be crevices that I'm missing. Yeah, there especially, might be. Especially in the butt. <laughs> that's always a fun, that's the fun part is when you get to certain parts of the mini, you're like, and how would I describe this without activating things? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm just going to say butt. Yep. I think it'll be fine. I, I think go. people understand the butt end of the myconid. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> There you go. Um, we had a couple more questions. Uh, Star Chaser yes. asks, mm -hmm. if the minis are not primed, is it hard to prime them yourself? It is not, and that is an excellent, excellent question to ask. Uh, the one thing I will say is, do not go to the hardware store and pick up just any old primer. Um, no house primer? No house primer. You'll find there are interesting chemical reactions with other types of prime primer uh, used on these miniatures because plastics will do funny things with each other if they're not meant to mm. play together. Uh, you might end up with something where a miniature that stays forever tacky. You might end up with a miniature where the prime coat actually shrinks and you end up with a crackle look to your paint because it didn't work out too well together. Uh, so in this case, when it comes to uh, how to prime your minis, uh, there's a couple of tricks. You can get dedicated prime, priming paint um, from Vallejo, from Citadel, from Army Painter. There's there's a few brands out there that you could take a look at. Uh, another trick I will do, and you're actually going to see this come into play, and it's already been mentioned as a supply for those of you who are on the Discord and everything like that, is to get a hold of a product called Mod Podge Ultra. Which, mm. if you know what Mod Podge is, yes, it looks like that paint that everyone would jokingly say, don't eat it when you were in school. It is, it is made by the same makers. However, it is a liquid form. Now, it is made to act as a seal coat, but also as a primer for various crafts. Oh. And I have found that I can take that, mix it with a little bit of the paint that I want to use, paint it onto my minis, and my minis have been totally fine. And I've been doing this for a good mm, almost two years now with Mod Podge Ultra. Uh, so that's another little trick you can do with your paints 
if you have a mini that's not primed and if for some reason you don't have a primer to paint onto your mini from a hobby based paint line um Pardon me for a moment. I'm just going to move this light so that I get sure. more, a, a better light. I'm, I'm having that moment where I'm like, I can't see around the black. And it's because I've, I have a streamer light and I mm -hmm. don't necessarily have a good mini light. So I'm just going to move this light a little bit. No, it's totally fair. It's always a game playing around with lights and minis when you're streaming. I will say that. If you're at home and you're playing the game at home, so to speak, Natural light is your best friend when it comes to painting minis. If you have a table near a window, that's like the best place to paint. And for those of us who uh, live in Seattle and mm. natural light is something that is about to go away, <laughs> lots and lots of um, bendable and stretchable mm -hmm. and uh, alterable lights yes. are really, really good. I just want to make sure I'm not going to blind anybody in the yep. chat, but hey, there we go. That's good? That's going to be a lot. Yeah. Hey, now I can see that top. I was just like, I'm, I'm trying to look, uh, especially in the claws, there's the kind of the inside of their hand. They're doing this. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to look in there and yeah. it was not working with that light. So yeah, it gets a little tricky sometimes. Okay. So I'm looking and I'm thinking that my Mykonid number one is looking pretty good in all black. OG Mike. Mm -hmm. OG Mike. OG Mike. I'm just calling them OG Mike <laughs> because we're going to be painting them like the uh, like the actual picture, but... Yeah, Mike and Mikey, maybe. <laughs> ah. uh, so that is the one finished in all black. And I'm going to set them to the side and I'm Ooh. going to rinse my other... Rinse. My other rinse water. And this is where having a paper towel on hand will be helpful because you can rinse and then dry your brush off. But this is what I meant with when you go to rinse your brushes, you don't want to be thinning your paints with this one because that starts doing things to your paints. Just you also do not want to be uh, using the water or the drink that is in your drinking mm -hmm. cup. Uh, that I would mean, be bad. It's a rite of passage for many a painter. Uh, have you, you know, sipped from your paint cup yet? Uh, thankfully, starting to use these smaller little containers helps. Uh, but yeah, oh, there are definitely times where it's, it's not drinking the paint water. It was taking my paintbrush and like dipping it into my tea. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Uh, that and was... then you got green on your brush, but you're, you're drinking green tea and it's like, well, well but... it's literally green but... tea. <laughs> but, but is it really that bad? Yeah, probably. Is it really something to worry about? So yeah, that is, uh, what I'm going to do is let this one dry now. Cause we definitely want this to have time to dry before we move on to the next step. So I'm going to shift we're not gonna over. Sit here watch paint dry well we could but that gets really boring <laughs> uh i'm gonna go to the other myconid uh to mikey this will be mikey uh mikey's mikey. going to get a similar treatment but all in brown and the Ooh. brown that i am using is flat brown from the model color line from vallejo but really you just want to use a classic brown so it can be a brown from uh one of your other miniature painting makers or um i'm also one of those people who will yes use craft paints <laughs> uh so shoot for a brown a nice standard mid-tone brown 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 and similar approach i'm just going to get some paint going on here i am going to thin this one out just a tiny 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 bit now as you can see i'm going for my thinning water not the rinsing water and i just while you do that drops. I'm going to grab some more questions from chat. Thank you, everybody Yay. in chat, for joining us for the inaugural um, Paint and Slay. Uh -huh. uh, we've had some more questions. Sketch BG wants to know any tips or tricks regarding super glue. I know we're going to be oh. dealing with mm. with gluing and uh, doing some alterations in mm -hmm. future episodes, but mm. any like beginner trips. Uh, tips or tricks that was yes. harder to say than i thought i know they sync up on you so actually there are some um tips that i have for you when it comes to using super glue a little will go a very long way the 10 second rule is your friend that means when you first apply the glue to one of the pieces not both sides but one of the sides where you're going to make a connection give it about 10 seconds to get exposed to air this will make the glue a little bit more tacky and get a better adhesion to the other thing that you are gluing it to. Uh, also, stay away from the gels. Uh, you will see hmm. everyone has the option of either a liquid or a gel form. 
And what I have found, and this is from personal experience and just from chatting with other friends, is that oftentimes the gel form becomes very powdery once dry, and it also is more brittle. So I'm having issues now about a year out from using a gel super glue that I had. And now these pieces are falling apart because the connection is more brittle with the gel form. I am not sure as to why that is the case, but I'm finding that many, many painters are noticing this is an issue. So I will always, always say, grab your classic liquid. That is your best way to go. Speaking of classic liquid, I think I am having the problem in where my paint is too thin. Ooh, hmm. okay. So you can have some fun here. Since, um... Or I might, I might just go grab a different brown. I might do that too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm... I've shaken it a How? bunch oh. and it's, it's, it's super, it's watery. Are you it using is. a wash? I don't think so. It says beastie brown. Yeah, that should be thicker. <laughs> that should be a lot thicker than that. Let me, you had me, uh, leather brown, right? Uh, I did have, a, oh, I had a leather brown. If yeah. If this doesn't work, I'll grab the leather brown. Let me give yeah. this one more really good shake. Maybe it's just been sitting for a little too long. Yeah, that can happen sometimes. I'm sure I sound amazing as I am shaking this little thing of paint. Uh, <laughs> all right, that's, that's the ASMR you get. All right, one mm -hmm. more time. Uh, it's a little, a little better. better. Let's, let's take a look. Yeah, I got it onto my brush and I was immediately like, this this, this doesn't, this, <sighs> this sounds like what V was talking about and where it's. Yep. And it can uh, okay, that is better. Yeah. That is better. Maybe okay. there was just some, some uh, sludge yeah. at the bottom I had to I had to get at. Yeah. But yeah, that is looking better. Yep, that is definitely something that can happen with paints that have been sitting too long. Uh, I have had a couple bottles of paint where I've literally had to sit there and shake them for a good two minutes before it started pulling together again. Mm. So little heads up if you get something that's super liquidy. And that looks like it probably had separated. Because that will happen yeah. in the bottles. Yeah. When I'm looking at the bottle, like I've turned it upside down and I looked at it, I'm like, oh, I see like mm. what might be, you know, sen uh, sediment. I almost said yes. sentiment. And I'm like, sentiment? well, the, my sentiment right now is that I'm very <laughs> unhappy with this paint. Ah! But I, yeah, I just needed to get, okay. give it a good shake, shake, yeah. shake, shake, shake. There are fun attachments that you can get from like 3D painting um, or 3D printing, I should say. 3D printing uh, creators where it's like, it's a clamp that fits onto bottles, but then you mm. can also attach it to your power drill. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I'm, I'm going to have to look this up. Yes. It's a thing. It's a thing that is out there. That's uh, fun. I've that seen funny? stuff like that in like, when you go to like Sherman Williams to pick up like house paints and that's, what it'll just. Yeah. It, yeah, it's exactly. It's like the miniature version. That's for... amazing. Yeah. I kind of want one, even though I have, I don't really know if I have a use for it, but I kind of want one. Right? Just for the fun of like, <laughs> All right. Oh, Surreal One. Ooh, I was just thinking about learning how to paint minis. Welcome. Hello. Welcome to the inaugural episode of Paint and Slay. We're doing yes. Myconids. Uh, this episode and next episode, we're going to be painting two of these Myconids. They're from, um, oh, they're from the Monster Manual. But the reason we went with the Myconids is because they are one of the big boss monsters in the neutral no more free play in the game in Idle Champions. Mm -hmm. um, so I just happened to be looking at chat when I saw that. But let me grab oh, some more questions. Um, I'll wait for it. Some says, seeing that plate... I imagine if the figures were edibles uh, painted with some food colorants. So after painting, you get yummy, you get an, a yummy army of monsters. Oh, Ooh. funny. I, so back in the days of Caves and Fire, when I played fourth edition D&D, &D, which uh, was an edition that you absolutely needed to have at least a basic battle map. You could mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. play that game. It was super fun. I love fourth edition so much, but it required minis. And we were poor. Uh, and did not have the resources to buy minis. You know, a couple Fair people enough. had yeah. some minis, and so we'd reuse things over and over again. Right. But every once in a while, I would buy uh, candy. I would buy M&M's or gummy bears. Mm -hmm. uh, the gummies actually worked out the best, and they would become the monsters. And so the deal was, if you defeated the monster, if you got the killing blow, you got to eat the gummy. Nice. I so like that. that was that was always fun. Uh, good times. 
True story. I have made edible terrain. Ooh, so there really <laughs> is. Like, I know that there are edible paints because I've seen uh, some of those cake shows. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Where, where they use that with, with fondant and stuff. But mm -hmm. like, so they make edible paint that you could put on terrain. Well, no. Or is the it just the same was, stuff? The, the terrain itself was fully edible. And it was, I used um, graham cracker, shredded wheat, food coloring, chocolate, Kit Kat bar, and shredded coconut. Oh my God, that's awesome. To basically make what looked like grassy terrain uh, with a log on top and like a couple little plants. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Please uh, tell me you have pictures of that that you can share. I We might have pictures because it was one of those things where Kelly the Opera Geek was with me to help out during one of my terrain classes at PAX U a couple years back. Oh, hi Kelly, the, the Opera Geek. Was... We, we love Kelly, she is awesome. We do. And uh, the joke was she uh, picked up the piece of terrain and I had purposely set it up next to the samples of, you know, this is what your terrain is going to look like when you're done with the class we're doing today. Um, and so she picked up the one piece and she started walking around the, uh, not classroom, but walking around the room. Yeah. And she stopped at one point and looked at this one guy and took a big bite of it. And he was just like utterly confused for a moment. And then I think he realized that, you know, it wasn't actually the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I that's have awesome made edible terrain Ooh, edible terrain mm -hmm. that'll be a, a far future we'll, we'll do a crossover episode with like griddle right. griddle oh, champions there you go. <laughs> and we'll there do you go. we'll do an edible paint and slay uh trontonian asks mm -hmm. for the quote lazy painter what yes. do you think of gw contrast paints and are they alter are there alternatives for them out there Okay, that's I don't know what that is, but I, can I hope you do. Speak to that. Yes, I do. Um, those contrast paints I have seen put to use and put to use well, I will say. Um, they are definitely an option for the quote unquote lazy painter, but they are also, they have their uses. If it is something where you have a literal army uh, that you want to paint up and get a whole bunch of minis done at once, then those contrast paints are where it is at. You get really decent results for. I shouldn't have looked at the chat for Pancake and Slay. Uh, you get really decent results for uh, what it does for you. It basically sort of combines putting on a base coat as well as doing a wash. And then you can actually go back in if you want to. And I have you know, seen other many artists do this once they've used the contrast paints, then they'll go in and they'll do the higher detail work and make things look a little bit more polished and finished off. But the contrast paints, if you want to give them a try and get a feel for how paints work and see how paints look uh, as they dry in different tones, then yeah, you can definitely go for that one. Have I used them personally? No, because I have so many paints and I don't usually paint en masse that I haven't really felt the need to get that particular product for myself. But like I said, I know other painters who do have them, who do use them and find good uses for them. Um, so I will have yeah, that this, to this say. This sounds like a Warhammer, uh, mm -hmm. a Warhammer mini friend is yeah. when, when you're, when you said little, literal army, that's yeah. what I thought of as my friends who were like, I have 45 troops to paint this weekend before my next mm -hmm. game. And I'm like, what? Exactly. Exactly what? that. So the thing to keep in mind with this is that I will recommend if you do get those paints, check out, um, I think they have their even their own guides. They'll give you suggestions for the base color before you start doing the other colors on top. Take a look at those and do test swatches to make sure that uh, you like the undertone of what it'll look like when you combine the base color with the contrast paint on top. That is one thing I wanna make sure I mention because I have had people who have come to me like, hey, I put this color on and then I use this contrast paint. And I don't like the way it looks. It's like, well, did you take a look at the other options that they also recommended? Um, so that is one little tip I have heard and I have um, had mentioned to me, just make sure your base color compared to what is recommended. Cool. So, yeah. I have I one other up. question I'm gonna throw at you since we were talking mm -hmm. about primer before, although, uh, you know, as we're as we're looking kind of at getting getting the brown coat on these guys, mm -hmm. um, Ulfin Og asks, is there a spray primer or is that base black <sighs> coat? So like, so I guess a more general question is if someone is going to go out and buy a primer, do you mm -hmm. have a, a preference between, because I have seen those spray on primers for minis. Yeah. Uh, do you prefer that? Do you prefer the paint on? What do you prefer? 
All right, this is definitely a preference thing on my part. Um, and also keep in mind that primers come in different colors. You can get white, gray, black. If you do what I do with the Ultra Mod, po Mod Podge, I will, or the Mod Podge Ultra, I will actually um, <laughs> create a primer that's close to the base coat I wanna use because I find it gives me a nicer result uh, at times. But I am not a fan of the spray-on paints. This is why. Uh, every time I have gone to use uh, spray on variety. I have found, especially with minis, not necessarily terrain, but minis. Um, sometimes you're into issues of the spray bottle jamming, and then suddenly you have flecks of thicker points of paint on your miniature oh. and you get like this model dotted effect so, or what happens is it overloads the mini and then you still need to pull out a paintbrush and smooth the paint back out again. Uh, so for minis themselves, I am ouch, not a fan of spray painting your primer onto your minis because I just find the consistency can sometimes be wonky. However, asterisk, if you're interested in doing airbrush, well then yeah, airbrush your primer on because I do that myself personally. I will actually line up a whole bunch oh. of minis and use my airbrush to prime the minis um, because I like the, because it does a nice thin aerated layer, you know, airbrush. Uh, but yeah, that is, uh, that's one of those things. I'm not a fan of the spray-ons uh, in that, that is... respect. Yeah. That is super good to know. That's also really good to know about the um, the airbrush because uh, my partner actually just got an airbrush Ooh. to have some fun with a variety of things, including some mini painting. So that's good to know nice. that um, airbrushing on primer is even a thing. So. It is. It is. And you get some really great results. Like there have been times where um, I have worked with a miniature company that doesn't have primed minis, but I was doing a workshop. And when you prime your minis, you have to wait a certain amount of time before you can paint them. So I will, oops, use the wrong one. That's okay, we're not gonna be thinning out paints. Um, I will actually prime the minis ahead of time for my workshop classes with my airbrush. And it's great results, so. That makes sense. I am not saying you have to have an airbrush. No, nope, nope. Not this saying is, that at all. This it's is a just luxury. If, if you are enjoying mini painting and you would like to then explore more and other options and, and mm -hmm. get into the hobby more, these are just, more and fun things but definitely uh, a couple of bucks a couple of of paint brushes and paints yeah. and you can go for it and uh exactly. but yes my my husband is an artist by trade like it, it's he does the comics he does uh, all sorts of stuff so like buying an airbrush for him is another tool in mm -hmm. his toolbox because he's been looking into doing some airbrushing stuff yeah uh, we actually had a couple people in chat Ulfin og said yeah i like the airbrush idea and uh autistic swede said i airbrush as well it's neat Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, we do have some, some airbrushing yeah. fans yeah. and I'm going to do one more call it on chat. Uh, work a bit says I'm an old grognard. I know many useless things. Some of them are relevant. Uh, welcome. We're more than happy to have the, those of us who, uh, we sometimes have to prevent sit, for us from saying, get off my lawn. Um, <laughs> I mean, Hey, as I, as I said, these pill bottles aren't just for show. Mm. I've, I've reached that age. Uh, and uh, new people who are just joining us. And yeah, I think when you get into a hobby like D&D or mini painting, you do learn a lot of stuff that seems like, oh, why do I, why is this sitting in the back of my head? And then all of a sudden you're like, I know, I know how to do this. Uh -huh. Anyway, you're about to move us on to step two. Yes, I was gonna say our, our black uh, Mike fellow should be all set up, the one that's in the black yeah. coat. Um, he should be all Let's set see. or they should be all set and ready to go. Uh, that I don't, I don't have the, my camera yeah, is not going to do the, the, the fun thing. thing. That's, this is why we have these really nice camera set up over there. Uh, I, I am, I am here to show you that you can know nothing and follow <laughs> along and famous. still end up with something fun. Uh, so we're going to shift over to starting to work a little bit more with Mike and not Mikey. Mikey can finish drying over to the side. Um, but before we switch over to doing a new technique, do we want to take a look at the game again? Uh, yeah, let's and see. For those of you let's who might be joining in, game. let's take a look. I, I can give you all kind of an update on things going. And this also gives me a chance. I, I forgot I wanted to take pictures of my minis so I can, oh, I can show off <laughs> progress. So I gotta, I'm just going to grab. Uh, yay! Uh, so I yay. got my, my brown and my black. Mike and okay. All right. So go. on neutral, no more. We're we're just charging on through. This is a free play that Ooh. I'm having some fun with. Um, I am personally actually doing uh, a Vajra free play. Um, so if you're looking for the Mike and Id, that's where you can find them. The other fun thing that's going on, this is the last weekend of unlocking Corazon 
in the game. So if you're looking to pick up the newest champion that has joined the roster from the Oxventure Guild, they are super fun. Um, I've been a fan of um, Outside Extra and Outside Xbox for quite a while. So I was super happy yeah. when Corazon and Prudence came to the game because I've been a fan of their stuff for a while. But we'll we'll jump on over here and I'll show off my, my Corazon uh, formation, which I talked about earlier in the week. Um, this has become a thing that I do because <laughs> I'm that person who plays the game in weird ways. Uh, when we, a new champion comes, all of the Heroes of the Plains join the formation to welcome them. So so this is my Heroes of the Plains formation with I love it. <laughs> That's amazing. So yeah. So I just have uh I just have a um this formation uh grinding away getting chests so that I can I can level up Corazon because I still have a couple blues. How how are you coming, V on your Corazon? Have you had a chance I to play? I just unlocked Corazon yesterday. <laughs> but well welcome. Like hey. So well. yeah. So I'm hoping this weekend I can have some fun like playing around and getting a feel for how he works in game as yeah. well. But I was so excited, I'm like, yeah, see that's mine. <laughs> It's fun when you get the chance to like it work is. with the creator and then work with the character yes. and then finally get to use the character in game. It's like, I've been talking about this for weeks and now right? I get to play like, with them. It's great. There he is. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, that was my last night. It was so much fun. Uh, so yeah, okay, cool. Now we'll go back right. to mini back game Back to Mike and time. Ike. Oh, and by the way, I saw someone, I they zipped by, but someone asked what type of camera I'm using for my overhead. This is the Logitech Brio. I actually am very much a fan of it for miniature work and showing the minis in more detail. So what we're gonna do now is going to Mike, we're actually going to start mixing paints. And right now we're gonna be working with black Ooh. and white mixed together. Uh, so what you're gonna do is you're actually going to need your flat brush, the number, uh, I think I'm gonna go for the four. Yeah, uh, the four flat because that's going to be part of the other step of what we're going to do. But I will keep mixing with my number three, only I'll be using the base of my brush as opposed to the brush itself. Uh, when you Ooh. go to mix paints, you don't, you'll actually wear out your bristles if you try and use it for mix, 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 mix. Use, use this side. Use this side of your brush. Um, also, thank yourself. you, Sly Theris, for noticing that I was playing the maracas with the pink because I'm like, I just left <laughs> these up. I haven't done the white yet. So here we go. There you go. Uh, so what I'm going to do is there's actually a process. We're going to try to mix a dark gray. And when it comes to mixing paints, it's like, oh, I add black and white and I get gray. True. Yes. This is, this is the base truth. However, how you approach it and what gets added to what first and in ratio will affect what type of gray you end up with. So if you're shooting for something that is darker, it is better to start out with the black first and add in a couple drops of white and end up with a darker gray tone. If you start with the white first and put in a couple drops of black, that's where you get your lighter gray. So since I wanna go for a dark gray, I'm gonna start with a fresh bit of black because that I can tell already got way too dry. Uh, I'm gonna do, not with a bubble. That's the other thing that happens, sometimes you get bubbles. So I'm gonna do two drops of black onto my plate plump and plump. Plump, plump. and I'm plump, going plump. to put a drop of white next to and I'll show you on my plate in just a second so I'll put a drop of white next to just like that okay. and then what I'll do is I'm actually going to take kind of like sort of take from the drop of white onto your brush end and mix that into your black and that will give you a nice dark gray to start with. Ooh. And you'll see it starts getting to a new tone. You don't want this to be something where you can see the streaks, so it's important that you mix. And it's always easier to add more than to try and take away. Um, Good luck trying to take away paint. <laughs> yeah. I have, I have, if you have that yes. skill. <laughs> That is a thing that can happen. All right, so I can see I want this just a little bit lighter because now that it's blended together more, it's looking a little too much like black again. So same thing, I will take the end of my brush, get some white on it and mm. add in a little bit more so I can do a gradual lightening of the black. And this is going back into those shadow layers that I was talking about before. And basically what this does, it creates a gradual layer build that will create these great shadows in 
the mini as well as highlights before we start having fun with washes and inks next week. Oh, nice. Yes. Uh, bah, 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 bah. And while you finish mixing that, I'm going to do a few more quick it. from chat. Uh, yes, J Dog, I'm, I'm here for all of your meme worthy clip <laughs> needs. Um, TTRB Gifts was here earlier. First off, hi, welcome. Um, they say, Lauren and V give me so much joy when I see them together, oh. and, and it gives us joy to see you in chat. And Absolutely. then they had a question um, for V. I know you might be new to Idol Champions, but do you have a favorite familiar so far? I like the corgi on the pixie, or the pixie on the corgi. <laughs> yep. It's yep. so dark cute. <laughs> that has become uh, a very quick favorite amongst the team. Yeah. Um, so basically what I just got up to get is when we're done, Ooh. this is what the shadow layer technique ends up doing. So our, Ooh. our buddy Mike will hopefully look like this by the time we're done today. So we're aiming for this, but you'll see how we do it with three different layers of gray, essentially. Okay. Uh, so once you get that mixed up, you can put your three round to the side. Uh, make sure you wipe off the handle at the bottom and don't leave that paint on there because you know, I cannot say at all that you won't forget it's there and then pick up that brush later and suddenly your hand is covered with, um, you know, paint. <laughs> so just a oh, little, yeah. little pro tip. I am fully tip. expecting by the end of this that I there will be paint places that I will oh, go, yeah. how, wait, how, how did I get paint you... on my elbow? You know, mm -hmm. how did it end up here? But that's I've, okay. I've ended up with paint behind my earlobe once and it's because I had paint on my finger and I scratched and I didn't realize it. <laughs> uh, I was like, what happened? We're, we're being asked in chat, I'll wait for it some, is asking about the Corgi writing on a pixie. Now I want I that. Was, mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's a very large pixie and a very it small is. Corgi. But, but yeah, you know. that'd be fun. Yeah. Okay, so we're taking our gray. <laughs> okay, so you take the gray and you're going to take your number four flat. And this is the one from the Mod Podge line. Um, so take that and you're just going to dip it into your paint you're not going to like plunge it in just get it so it gets a nice layer at the very edge of the brush all right we're going to jump into a technique called dry brushing and this is a nice technique especially for beginning painters because you'll see magic starts to happen especially as we start getting up higher in the layer colors so what you want to do with dry brushing is it's kind of the name implies it you don't want your brush loaded up with paint okay in fact right now where it is that's too much paint so what you can do is you go to a paper towel and you basically just start brushing the paint off and when you start to see it streak and bring out the texture of the paper towel by gliding it across that's how you know you have just about the right amount of paint to start doing the same pull across technique on your mini okay all if, right if you want to get another feel for it you can also use, I love using my wrist because you can see there's all this fantastic texture to it and skin responds similarly to paint as the plastic would because don't forget the paint on the paper will get absorbed. Uh, so sometimes I'll even say if you're just learning how to do it, make a fist, tip your wrist or tip your hand back towards your wrist so you get this open area here and then just play around with pulling the brush across your skin and you know you have the technique going when these grooves in here don't have as much paint on the higher as the higher surfaces of your skin do. So that's okay. another way you can play around with learning how to do dry brushing. And when it gets to the point where you're pulling across and nothing is happening, that's when you know, right now I'm seeing it here, is where you need to go back in and load your brush with more paint. So that is the quick little uh, how-to. That's how I knew I had way too much paint. Yep, <laughs> yep. But it's a fun little, fun little way to do that. All right. Uh, so I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna take. <laughs> I'm gonna take. Jeez, I just tapped into my grandfather. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna take the dark gray, and I'm gonna just start pulling this across Mike. The trick with dry brushing is you want to work across the details. So if you have like with the beard, how the details run vertically to show off the texture in the beard. I'm going to pull the brush across horizontally where those vertical details are. Okay. And you can also move the mini around too, so you can get to the angles you want to. But, and it's not going to pop out as much, but you will start noticing, Lauren, especially since you have it right in front of you, it will start making a slight difference in tonality between the flat black and now this dark gray. And oh, I'm just yeah, taking sure. this across and it's you don't want to get into the nooks and crannies 
And heavens, there um, are plenty of nooks and crannies. I might have gotten into some nooks and crannies. <laughs> well, luckily, this is the dark gray, so it won't be as prominent. But yeah, that's basically the start up here. We're going to work it across and just have it start to build a new layer of color. Okay. And I kind of work little sections. Like right now, I'm like, oh, okay, I see there's a lot happening here with the back. So I know that my brush needs to pull across the texture on the back. And then I'll rotate my mini. And I'll work on a different area, like under here, under the noggin, or the cap. And we're just going to do this kind of all over wherever all we over see the these mini. grooves. Yep, all over. Actually, just do it over the entire mini, because there's textures you won't realize are there until you start working the the uh, brush across it. All right. Yeah. Well, and while we're doing some dry brushing, I will grab some more questions from chat. Woohoo. Uh, Coffina says, tried to rinse my brush in my coffee. Didn't uh -huh. taste too good. No, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I'm sure at some point you'll watch me do this on stream. I'm waiting for that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, for the, I actually have, I, I did think about having a separate cup that was very, very distinctively, this is my drinking cup, mm -hmm. this is my, my water cup, but it's, uh, I'm sure it'll happen. Mm -hmm. uh, let's it see. Will. It will. Uh, Sly Theris asks, for me, fourth edition is Caves and Fire. Uh, then what would you call AD&D second edition where Ooh. I started? Oh, uh, I would I would joke that it's the beginning of time, but it's second edition. So <laughs> we know that that's not the beginning of time. Right. Um, uh, Caves and Fire. Um, the Mastodons are awesome. It's the Mastodons are awesome. <laughs> that's that's what uh, that's what it is. And then we'll have to find some some hardcore AD&D people mm -hmm. who can talk about some other stuff. There you go. Oop, that's a little too much. I'm I'm sure I'm sure I, I did a little bit too much, but ah uh, well. Well, that's also why I like this technique because right now you're working in subtle tone differences. Mm -hmm. So the payoff will be big in the end, but it also gives you a chance to get comfortable with the technique before you're working with stark contrast. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah. And I have only dry brushed a few times in my life. I was gonna say I know you've been in a few of the other painting streams that I've done. Where we have used dry brushing. Yeah. And that that's about it. I, yeah. I did uh I have I have very little in the way of um mini painting experience. I've I've I have painted a couple minis, but they've almost all been uh a PC that I then got assistance with painting mm -hmm. from either uh, I was in a friendly local game store or just friends of mine that we were working on. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually have, you, you can't see them because, because of lighting, but uh, mm -hmm. all back there, I've got most of my PCs that I have, uh, I have minis for. Um, mm -hmm. I have a couple really nice Orkiras that I've been super lucky to get. Um, Especially when I've when I've had the chance to play with D four, they they do some amazing work, and they made some custom minis, and so I I have an Orkira from them, and every once in a while I pick that up, and I'm like, I need to learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I need to learn how to do that. I need mm -hmm. to learn how to do that technique. So, but it's fun. Like I, I, for me, mini painting is just kind of it's this right here. It's hanging out with friends, yep. and doing something fun, and uh, absolutely. And, just ending up with something cool afterwards that then I can put down on a on a board and say, I did that. I did it. I did it. I did this. And I do remember from uh, one of your previous paint and slays, one of the best pieces of, of advice was, hey, it's paint. You mm -hmm. can always just paint over it. Mm -hmm. this it's is true. okay. It's all right. It's a learning process. And I think that's something that gets a lot of people held up in the beginning. But what if it doesn't look right? Mm. That's okay. Also, uh, real quick, uh, Stroopshire DM is raiding. Welcome, Hello. welcome, welcome, raiders. We are we are paint and slay. We're mm -hmm. currently painting the Mykonids. Uh We've got two of them here. We're doing some dry brushing, and we're just having some fun on a Friday. So yeah. uh, wa watch and welcome and join us as we go into the Underdark. All right, I I think I probably did a little bit too much in some places, but that's, that's okay. Right. Uh, what I'm doing now, because I want this layer to dry on Mike, is I'm going to move over to Mikey and right. same idea. 
take the white and you're going to mix it into the brown. Brown. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give this another really good shake because I think yeah. the last thing I probably want with this is is uh, watery. Right. <laughs> and this one's going to be a nice lighter brown. Okay, there we go. And same thing, like two drops of brown, one uh, drop of white. Yeah. Yep, and you're kind of aiming oh. for almost like a hot chocolate color. Ooh. Like I said, I use food for reference and colors and consistency. I'm I'm just today is one of the first days of the fall here in Seattle and where it mm -hmm. has become um, what it will be for the next couple of months, which is gray and cold. But that's fine. Oh. Like I'm an indoor child anyway. Yep. There you go. Yeah. So, so I'm guessing we should be saying Shropshire for Dia. Shropshire. Shropshire. Yeah, not Shropshire. I'm very <laughs> trying to pronounce my username. Oh yeah, Shro Shropshire. I mean, uh, I, I could go Yiddish and I could go Hopsher. Oh. <laughs> but I'm guessing you're probably right. That is probably Shropshire. Shropshire. Spot on. Ooh. Well, I lived in London for a little bit, so that would be why. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. You want a linguistic adventure, go Northern England. I was very, and very lucky when signs. I was much, much younger and got a chance to go to mm -hmm. England and Ireland. I was oh, on tour. Lovely. Uh, but it was many, 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 mm. many, many, many years ago. Have I mentioned I'm old? So yeah, I hope at some oh. point, once the panini is over, I get to go back. Uh, that's that's my hope as well. So we're going to do the same thing with Mikey, except with the lighter color brown now. And again, go uh, all just... over the body. And dry brush. And you can see here it's happening on the cap. And it's a little bit easier to see with the brown how the details are starting to pop out a little bit here. So that is what we're trying to do now with Mikey as Mike dries. All right. And what are we using for speech to text is a question that came up from Claudel GFX. It is Google Meets. They have a closed caption option and it's just a window capture. Yep, so we've been that, yeah. experimenting with a bunch of different ways to get closed captions on these streams. Um, and not all the streams are gonna be the same I, because uh, we have a bunch of different streamers and a bunch of different shows and everybody's going to kind of have some different options. Um, the the stuff that I like using, especially when it's just me or me and one other person or maybe two other people has been just using the Google Meets. Uh, I know Garwar, who might be in chat. Uh, Garwar is welcome. If not, you, you should watch Garwar. Garwar is mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, I know they've been using a web captioner, which is really good, especially if you are streaming um, by yourself. And yeah, uh, we've we've been trying some stuff out, but I have found Google Meet so far has been uh, my preferred. Um, but I, I'm also still trying to get there's this um, there's an overlay one that I really want to get working because then instead of uh, me trying to figure out what people want in closed captioning, if I can get the overlay to work, then you, the viewers at home, you can decide how your own closed captioning works. But mm -hmm. that is. Uh, you haven't been able to get it to work the way I want it to yet. So I wonder if I've made this not light not enough. Not light enough? Maybe, or maybe I just, uh... yeah, I'm having a little, a little bit of harder time seeing See, this than I so did, but I'll... it's also brown. More, yeah, a little bit more yeah. white wouldn't hurt if you're really Tiny. not seeing a huge jump. Or a difference, I should say, not a huge jump. Ah, and Garwar is in chat because Hello. we just got a um, something pushed along from our moderators where Garwar says, the problem with the overlay is I don't think it's available for VODs. That is true, but we also uh, make sure that the closed captioning is on for our YouTube videos. So it does, It uh, when we've got, and we've been really we've been trying to be really good. I was going to say we've been really good, but you know what? I'm sure, I'm sure we've missed a couple. We've been trying to be really good about getting the videos up on YouTube on a, in a timely manner so that we can have those captions up because, you know, it takes a little bit. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, still, still working on stuff. There we go. Now, now that I got a little bit more white in there, I think I just needed like a tiny bit yeah. more. And I am seeing there's a couple spots where the paint has dried 
but because I know I'm going to be going in with a wash in the future, I'm not going to stress out about that little bit of white showing through. Yeah. No stressing over minis. Nope. This, nope, this nope, would be, nope. yeah. The... Uh, Cassius335 says, I wonder what a painter themed idol champion would be. I am not going to say anything except Neither. you should continue stay to stay tuned. Stay tuned. It's very interesting that you say mm -hmm. that. That's all we're sharing though. <laughs> um, so this is with, and you want to make sure it's getting to be a lighter brown. Uh, Sarah 10 is asking. It's just a little bit lighter. You're going to, you're going to go from a dark tone to a light tone is how we're working with these. But you can see you get the details on the cap now showing through a little bit more. Yeah. As a result. So, all right, Mikey's going to dry and now I'm going to go back to Mike. I'm loving all right. his names. <laughs> here's, here's, here's my, 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 uh, is it Mike and Mikey or I'm, I'm Mike going and Mike and Mike. Ike. Mike, if you want to do Mike, you can name those Mike and Ike if you so choose. I, th I think I'm Mike and Ike here. I, I'm, I'm all in on the candy references. Why not? There you go. So I'm okay, going to take going back to Mike. Yeah. And my black is still, or the mixed color that I just did. That's actually still pretty good. So I'm going to put another drop of white next to it. And I'm going to mix the white in with the color I already had mixed up from before to create an even lighter gray. Ah. Oops. There we go. I also got a bubble. It went. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that was an attractive noise that I just did on the camera. That's, That's okay. I, I, I am not apologizing to chat. So I'm not. I'm just, you're just having to deal with my mouth noises for. Yep. I may actually need to add some black to this. So then might if you not have to do enough. that, then it's equal parts. Okay. But you can see the gradual color build from here to here. That makes sense. Yep. Just making sure it's nice and mixed together. And because this is such a small mini, I know I don't need a whole bunch of miniature paint for this, which is why I'm comfortable working in drops and not multiple things. Yeah, we'll be doing some bigger minis down the line, but right yeah. now uh, we're doing we're doing the... It's actually kind of funny because when you look at the Mica did when it shows up in Idol Champions, it's huge. Yes. It is so big. Mm -hmm. And then and then you get the minis and it's like, oh, they're adorable. They're, they're wee. They're, they're, they're so to small. scale. <laughs> they actually are to scale. That's the fun thing. Yeah. yeah All right. So, so now thing. we're looking for like an even lighter gray on this. Yeah. Yep. Like okay. a mid gray. Not to be confused with mid guard. I mid was just thinking the same thing. I'm like, is Dan still here? All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, you know, I've, I dabble in the mid guardian area as well. There you go. Um, all right. So I'm going to go in with this medium gray now. And same thing, just pulling across those details. And let me show you with the cap. Look, you can see this is where it really is going to start making a difference. Oh, yeah. Yeah, especially those like little mm -hmm. tiny, like right over the mm -hmm. brow ridges. Yep. That's where um, those tinier details are going to start coming through. Okay, now I'm going to pull up a couple more questions. Alrighty. Uh, surreal one asks, uh, mm -hmm. what I think is actually a very reasonable question. Uh, ballpark cost to get started with painting minis. Okay. That is a wonderful question. I am going to give you the true bargain basement recommendation. Uh, you might find there are other people who have different opinions and that's just it. All artists have different approaches and suggestions, uh, which is why I recommend if you're enjoying what you're seeing here, also go check out other mini painters because they will also have different tips and advice and ways to get started. But I am of the camp where if you want to start getting into mini painting and getting a feel for if you like it, if you want to continue with it, but have it be budget friendly, here's what you'll want to do. Get yourself miniatures like this pack from WizKids or comparable companies where the minis are about, you know, a dollar to about three dollars a mini. Um, that you'll find works out nicely for a beginner budget. Then what you can do for paint, I am going to suggest getting Mod Podge Ultra, okay, because that is something that will help with this. Get yourself some Mod Podge Ultra because that can not only work as a means to make your paint a little bit more adhesive to your miniature, but it'll also be great for sealing in the end. Then you're going to go to a craft store and you are going to pick up those plaid craft paints, whether uh, it is from their various lines. But I do find that craft paints, they usually go for a four ounce bottle is anywhere between 50 cents American dollars 
to a uh, dollar, dollar twenty-five, and you can get your base colors of black, white, red, blue, uh, and yellow. And you can start mixing colors together, and that will give you a starting point for learning how to work with minis. Craft paints do work on miniatures. I know there will be some people say, "No, not craft paints." <gasps> no. It does work, and it does work nicely. If you are at all concerned about some of the things that others might bring up, oh, it's going to crack, it's going to chip, that's where you put in a little bit of that Mod Podge Ultra into your paint instead of using water to thin because that'll help it get a little bit more of a um, firmer uh, dry, so to speak, because it has like a varnish factor to it. Um, so it's just a little bit of insurance policy, if you will. Is it necessary? Ooh. Not really, um, but... It can help in that respect. So you you really can learn to start painting minis with craft paints. Uh, this brush set is actually quite reasonable, the one from Mod Podge. Uh, a set of brushes, basic brushes. I think it's like maybe $6.99 for a pack of 10, something along those lines. It depends on the store. Um, but yeah, you can probably get started into your first foray into miniature painting for about 20 bucks. There you go. And, and then, yeah, we, yeah. if you're ever wondering what we're using on stream, um, V's got a whole plethora of stuff. I've been using the stuff that we actually put into the, um, the, the list for here. Here's what we're going to be using to paint this mm -hmm. mini. If you go to our discord, discord.gg slash idle champions, we have a paint and slay channel that uh, every week we will continue to update with specifically what we're going to be using so that you can have a chance to get it and and paint along or get it afterwards um and yeah we try to keep it as reasonable as possible um and i certainly have not found uh, especially as a beginner especially as someone who's just kind of doing this for fun and not necessarily uh is looking to suddenly paint a lot of minis um mm -hmm. like a, there's a little bit of an initial investment with getting some of the paints and brushes but then the paints and brushes are there for a long time i mean the the couple of drops that we've used out of these bottles like these bottles i i have to imagine are going to last for dozens dozens and dozens of minis oh, unless yeah. we get a tea mat you know yeah i you know for context those uh whiz kits paint night kits i have been using i've done like seven minis with just one of the paint sets already those little oh yeah pots. uh so you a little bit of paint goes a very long way i'm happy to report but Absolutely. that would be my recommendation. If you are brand spanking new, you have a tighter budget, then go with the craft paint way. If you have some money and you want to invest a little bit, then sure, you can go to the hobby store and you can pick up, uh, comparable to what Lauren has, there are starter kits uh, from various paint companies that have a few rounds of basic paint colors and use those to get started. They tend to be a little bit more pricey in terms of starting. So if you start with that and going for a kit, uh, like a paint kit um, that has just strictly paints and then getting some, you know, brushes and everything like that, you're probably looking anywhere from, from 30 to 45, maybe 50 startup. Um, it just depends on what your budget is, but pretty much you can get started. It's just a matter of getting a paint and getting the paint onto the mini and going from there. Um, and those paint night kits are super fun because they really do come yeah. with absolutely everything. everything. And and yeah, I've got two or three of those now. And mm -hmm. uh, honestly, there was a moment where I'm like, I could just use the brushes and the paints that I got from those paint night kits for all of this. Mm -hmm. But I really did want to have, you know, so if anyone wanted to follow along with me, the beginner, I wanted yeah. to have the same stuff. So I'm also going to grab another picture of these minis because... Go for it. Yeah, I'm actually way more happy with how the back of this one turned out than the mm -hmm. front. I think it's very obvious, at least to me, that the front is where I started learning how to dry brush yep. and the back is where I might have gotten way better. <laughs> yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but here's where Mike's sitting now with the mid gray. <laughs> I keep thinking mid guard um, on his body. So we'll let that dry. And I'm going to go back over to Mikey and we're going to go in with an even lighter brown. Same thing except we're going to avoid the top part of the cap. Oh, okay. Mm, Mikey's getting a little bit of change up here. Ah, so why are we avoiding the top of the cap? Because we're actually gonna go in and this is the one that's gonna have a cute little red cap with the white dots on top. Ah, So we're gonna okay. get a little bit of painting in there, which is why I know I don't want to necessarily do the exact same thing. Um, 
So I'm gonna do another drop of white next to what I've already been mixing. Take the base of another paintbrush and mix it together. And it should give me a creamier brown. And I'm gonna I grab some more. more. Nope, I'm Ooh, just nice. I'm looking at the color. I might actually go even lighter. Uh, no. Yeah, because no, our no. first one you were talking about chocolate. You're talking about hot yeah. chocolate specifically. Yeah. Um, and now we're going this for is, oh hmm, coffee yogurt. Mmm. Okay. Coffee ice coffee cream. Coffee yogurt. So much lighter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And this is this is a nicely related question from uh, Glency Deffen. Mm -hmm. Is it important to paint darker colors first, then lighter, or is this just something that we are doing for these minis? It's always good to start off with darker colors because naturally, and this taps into the chiaroscuro, naturally, if you look at what's around you, the shadows lie lower, the highlights are higher. Um, so you wanna start out with dark colors and then you build up to your lighter tones and then to your highlights as a result. It's just the nature of how things work and how light is caught on different objects and is reflected back for your eye to see. Uh, so you do always wanna start with darker colors and then you build up to the lighter ones. Uh, that's a very good question though. There is a method to the madness. <laughs> I figured there was, or at least if this was the kind of thing in where th this is what we're doing today be mm -hmm. because we're specifically using this technique right. to build up and up and up. Um, and I'm just grabbing <laughs> sketch BG says paint and shake episode one paint and shake. Ooh. That's yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of now want hamburgers. Um, let's see. <laughs> Dracosaur says, I appreciate you going through this at this pace. Very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. yeah we're the whole idea of this is, although V and I are both East coasters, so we do speak quite quickly mm. unless I'm thinking about it. But yeah. this is this is a more relaxed, more um, we can go into details and go into um, tangents if we want kind mm -hmm. of thing, which is why at least the Mykonids are going to be a, a two week thing. We'll be coming back to these next week. So if you would like to if, if you don't have anything right now, you'd like to join us. Uh, the VOD will be up on our YouTube and you can do part one before we have part two next week. Yes. And. <laughs> Critter Wolf says, but are you really painting if you don't dip into your drink at least once? Ah, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> but as you can see on Mikey, those textures are really popping out I even more. I through this entire stream without... Ooh. What? Oh, there was a little bit of a, a hiccup in internet, but I think oh. it's back. Okay. That's so, okay. What did you had just said then? Because I think it got a little jarbled. Oh, it was just that I'm I'm going to attempt to make it through an entire stream without drinking any paint. I, I think I think I can do it. I Quite think possibly. it's possible. I fail at it when it gets to be details time because I will it's an old habit. I get yelled at it a lot. <laughs> um it's one of those things where I will take my details brush and after I rinse it, I do rinse it, I will like quick we tip the brush with my tongue. Oh, okay. Well, but that is, that's intentional. Yes. Is it good? No. Is it intentional? No. Yes. I, I think we're all talking about that moment of just like, oh, yep. crud. That, I didn't mean to do that. It was not what I wanted to do. Good news is, is, you know, as far as I can tell so far, my paints are all labeled non-toxic. <laughs> and I would imagine <laughs> the, the tiny little bit that you would get right. in your in your drink wouldn't be too bad unless unless something's going really very strange wrong. yeah <laughs> unless something has gone very wrong yeah. but you know what in that case you do you if, if you are a mm -hmm. fan of paint get yourself some of those edible paints we were talking about get yeah. yourself the uh the paints that you can put on a cake yes let's see which is kind of just like frosting <laughs> um applesauce says and then once you're started you'll just continue to buy more minis and then mm. it's humanly possible to paint then it's humanly possible to paint but maybe that's just me now nah, i i am still a a novice a beginner a not don't do too much mini painting but my very limited understanding is you always end up with more minis that you need to paint than you have the time to actually paint 
Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know if I know anyone who has ever painted minis who doesn't at least have another one sitting around is like, I'm going to get to that someday. Yeah. I, I know I do. And I am a beginner. I am a super novice. So <laughs> that's just half the fun, right? It's just, mm -hmm. that's, that's just having the, the next project down the road. God, exactly. why is, why is your armpit so hard to get into my there I, ah. Yeah. I was just noticing there are some nicks and crannies that are stubborn. Yeah. Uh, but you can see here, this is how my Mikey's looking. Aww. Now, which is because I'm going, I'm going for like that lovely little classic red and cream mushroom. So that's exactly where I want this Mikey to be. And again, it's important to let this dry in between when you go and you do your um, graduated layers because, like I'd mentioned before, if you try and go in when the paint is still wet, you will actually end up accidentally stripping the paint off because wet paint with almost dry paint, they stick together and you rip off the dry paint. But you don't want to do that. Nah. So I'm going to rinse my flat brush again. Oh, let's see here. I don't know how well this will show up, but there's there's my, my Ike. Ooh, he's looking let's great. See. I can get a little bit. And once again, I feel like I am better at the, the back than I am at the front. I think, I I think, think part of it is like, uh, I'm just having, um, I, I start at the front and then I get better by the back or maybe the back just because it's got like the bigger ridges. It's, you have a wider space for, because you're still learning the ah. techniques. So you, you're doing grander motions. Uh, my hands have the muscle memory to be more finite in motion. Your hands are still learning. So you actually have more area to sweep and pull across. So your hand feels mm. more comfortable. That's why your back looks better. I am not surprised to hear that you realize you're, you're seeing that result at all. Uh, but here you can see, and I'm going to set this one aside. And now it's time to go back. And remember how I said, if you want to get a light gray, start with a white. We're doing it. Yep. That's where I'm, I'm going to go in with a nice, healthy drop of white. I got to get a new paper towel. I have just I brought an entire roll two. because I figured I was going to be making a mess. So yeah. I have more paper towels than yeah. uh, I probably need. But maybe not. <laughs> there you go. So I'm going to start right. off with a healthy drop of white and then just a little dot. No, my black is blowing a bubble. That happens. Oh. I move it away and I will like dab it elsewhere where I don't need it. And just a little dot of black next to it. So you can see. I'm like obsessively mixing these or shaking these every single time now. Shake, oh, okay. Shake, so shake, a tiny, <laughs> tiny little. And I'll mix the two together because I right now want a light gray. Okay. And you can see I have a nice light gray forming and I'm not playing the back and forth game. <laughs> oh, and I, well, actually, I was thinking at first, I'm like, I don't think I put enough black in there. And now it I'm like, oh, catches well, up with you. As soon yeah. As you mix in. Yep. That's why I recommend start with white if you want to go light gray. All right. And back to the questions. Um, uh, we've got Ensign Garrick. Nice reference. I apologize to you. If you already said this and I missed it, that's okay. This is a two hour stream. We're here to help and answer questions. And I am sure just like most of our other informative streams that we get people coming in all the time at all different times who are gonna ask questions that um, they missed that we might've already answered at the beginning of the stream, but you won't be the only person who came in uh, later in the stream. And so I bet you there's other people in the stream who are gonna be thankful that you asked. Um, what kind of a starter mixture painting kit would you recommend? So, um, so yeah, we did talk about what we're specifically using. If you want to ever see the, the whole list of all of the stuff that we are using for these miniatures, if you come to our discord, discord.gg slash idle champions, mm -hmm. we have a paint and slay, um, uh, channel that you can come to and it's the, the full list. Uh, but I'll actually just say this off here right now for the Mike and it adult. Uh, we've got a set of, and I'm specifically using the stuff that we recommend. So you can mm -hmm. come along with me on my painting journey. <laughs> uh, so we've got a set of hobby brushes, uh, specifically the Mod Podge detail brushes. 
Um, we've got some paper plates and cups and paper towels uh, and a mini holder, which both of us are using pill bottles. Here, wait, yep. I got to grab my... Yeah. All the pill bottles. Um, the minis, these are the Nosler's Marvelous Miniatures. These are the Mike and Did Adults. You get two. You get two for, for a pack of one. It's great. And they're adorable. <laughs> Um, specifically today, we are using four paints. We got a black, a white, a brown, and a red. Um, if you come to, if, if you're looking at the Discord, we actually list off the specific black, white, brown, and red that's being used. But, you know, use a black, white, brown, brown and red. Uh, and then we won't be using it today, but later on, mm -hmm. um, perhaps next week, we will be getting yes. into washes. Yes. And there will be a yellow, a blue, a green, a red, and a brown wash. So you there you go. Now I got to do a little bit of catch up, but that's okay because that's the brush I want to use. Hey. Yeah. So you can see with going on the lighter gray, now this is where the details are really starting to come out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is where the magic is. Now, with this, again. are we doing the whole? Oh, whole yeah. Body. I'm seeing you actually. Yep. I was like, are we doing the whole cap again? And... Yep. Okay, cool. With Mike, Mike gets the whole body Ooh. treatment. Mikey's the one who's shifting. My Mikey, your Ike. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's looking nice. Yeah. And it's just a very feather light touch. It's amazing. You don't need much force or even like working the brush into the miniature. It's more letting it hover and feather over the miniature is really what you're looking at. The interesting thing about all of this is I feel like I should be better at this because I I have experience as a, um, I am a classical musician and mm -hmm. I make my own oboe reeds. Mm -hmm. And so I'm used to at least this basic concept of, um, I, I just uh, use knives and mm -hmm. wood instead of mini painting. Mm -hmm. And so like the, the fine movements and, you know, keeping, keeping the posture good and not hunched over and, and all of that stuff. Like that's just second nature. Well, I shouldn't say second nature. That is something that is ingrained in me from years of training. Right. Uh, but definitely this is a different skill set. Mm -hmm. Like uh, coming, the, the fine motor control only helps a tiny bit. Yeah. I don't have the, the artist's eye. And then, yeah, even like what you said, the broad strokes. Yeah. <laughs> It's still, it's still a different enough task where it takes time to figure it out. Absolutely. But and it's there's fun. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. I mean, time is what we have. So use it to your advantage. There you go. And what better <laughs> way to do it than uh, on a Friday afternoon, enjoying yeah. some time on, on our channel. Yeah. So welcome. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in fact, I'll wait for it. Some is asking Idol Champions mini and tabletop when? Uh, I mean, we are we are a video game, but I, I kind of like the idea. Um, it, I mean, if you do want to see some Idol Champions D and D, they didn't use any minis. You can watch um, Idol Champions Presents from earlier yes. in the year. Do uh, which was so much fun. Yeah, super fun to watch. Um, but yeah, I I so know. Um, <laughs> is it today that he had his anniversary? That Eric. I know he posted it on Twitter. Said, didn't he say it was today? I I think so. Um, there you are. So the CEO of mm. our fine company um, is a is one of those people. Uh, yes, today marks my ninth anniversary at CME Games. So yay! Uh -huh. And the reason I bring him up is not just to uh, celebrate that, but if you follow him on Twitter, uh, Eric Remy Jordan, he posts um, the he does a lot of. Uh, he calls it paper ephemera, which is the mm -hmm. word that's in my in my head. But I know it's more than just paper that he uses. Like he's got all sorts of amazing props yeah. that he uses in his D and D games, and he'll post about all of the stuff that he uses. Um, so yeah, there's there are some D and D games that just absolutely go go really deep into the the physical stuff, which mm -hmm. can be a lot of fun. Absolutely. Okay. So that is with the light gray. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right. I was afraid that mine was looking too gray, but now that I see kind of uh, with yours, once again, it's not gonna uh, zoom as well. Right. But, oh, uh, that's, yeah. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. I'm not as far off as I thought. 
Mm. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put Mike down. This also gets in the territory where I could do this for far too long because I enjoy this, like bringing out more and more details. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but we don't no, only have 20 minutes hours. left in this That's stream. Exactly. But we'll be back. For yeah, we'll have the one. Mike and Ids back for next week. Yes, and iron out a little bit more of those new stream kinks. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, episode one is always a it's always challenge. Yep. But thank you everybody for sticking with Absolutely. us through the beginning when we had a couple technical challenges yes. and stick around after us. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe is Gar Wars stream. So Yay. there's going to be even Definitely more stick awesome Idol Champions funness coming up once we are done. But I see we've got more white paint being put onto the plate. Yep, more white paint because we're going to make a very, very light brown and same thing. Uh, ah. Drop of white. Is that gonna be a drop or is that gonna be a bubble? And then just a little dab of brown. A little dab will do ya. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm gonna give this one last really good shake. Yes. So you can see the difference in drop sizes. Oh jeez. Yeah. Oh jeez. Oh jeez, a little bit. It's so just, tiny. Just, just a little tiny. Okay, okay. Just to kiss right. a brown. Okay. Come on. Oh, that was. Uh, if you got think, too much, you can actually take your paintbrush, like what we did in the beginning, dip it into the brown, and then move it to the white. Okay, yeah. Because uh, I think you wanted a peck on the cheek, and I... I did you get I, a slobbery I, toddler kiss? <laughs> I, I, I think, yeah. Yeah, it's a bit much. It's, it's a dog just came up and licked. Oh, dear. Oh, but dear. But that's okay. Yeah. I will do as you suggested. There you go. So this is more the color of, like, um, almost toasted marshmallow. Mmm. Which now I really want... <laughs> Now I want s'mores. <laughs> I I have been looking forward to being able to um, do a little bit of uh, have a nice fire outside and maybe toast some marshmallows and stuff mm. like that. Because yeah, when it when it gets to that cold rainy season here in Seattle, there's yeah. it's just nice to have warm cup of tea, uh, toast some marshmallows, do stuff like that. Now because <laughs> my paper towel is white, I actually I'll do my dry brush checks on my wrist. Ah. Um, because sometimes we're like, Meh, I can't see the paint color at all. So that's where I will test on my wrist. And then same thing, we are going to dry brush on Mikey and Ike with this lighter brown. And I'm just carefully bringing out all those little details. All right, while you are bringing out details, I will go back to uh, thank you once again to Martin for Ooh. grabbing all these questions. Thank we you. really appreciate it. Um, also, thank you, Maddie Lamore, who says that they, they always like watching streams when, when I'm on it. So Aww, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, and J Dog, is there a timestamp for the Best of Lauren compilation video? Uh, <laughs> not yet. I'm sure someone is making making. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, there's got to be something uh, floating out there. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Mistral. I want to make sure I get this correct. Mm -hmm. Mistral Fesh Chad Mexicano. I hope I got most of that correct. I apologize if I did not. Welcome to the unofficial happy accident stream with Lauren and V's joy of painting. There Aww. we go. Oh, I love that. That's yeah, that's fun. that is that is an honor to even uh, yes. be considered in the same realm as uh, as, as any kind of uh, wonderful painters like that. Ooh, I just did way too much on the beard. Oh no! Ooh, ooh. beard no! Not the beard. Uh, Not the me, beard. You can always go in and sort of dry your brush a little bit. No pun intended. Um, and pull some of the paint if you want to, and move it around just a little bit and see if that helps. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, you're going to not get as much on the... I'm going to show you the cap um, because I did say avoid it with that mid-tone brown, but because this is going to get a touch of red, what I'm going to do is make sure that I have more of a dry brush and then just very gently bring it out. Just on the front bit. where those, the, the yeah, brow is? on the front and on the edges. Okay. So I'm going to work around the edge of the cap. It'll make more sense once we get the layer of red put on. That's probably going to happen next week. I had red out just in case we had time to get to it. But I'm thinking that's going to be our first step next week. So I'm just taking this around the edges of the cap. And also, like, those little frill points. Oh, yeah. 
that was always one of the interesting things about uh, watching any painter stream is there's there's always a moment you're like, that's amazing. That's gorgeous. And then they do something else. And there's always a moment where you're like, wait a second. Mm -hmm. Now, now I don't understand what's going on. You've ruined everything. And then <laughs> they do something else. And it's like, oh, no, wait, now it's now even better. It. Yep. Like, it's just it's it's amazing to to watch and not know, like, anything about the process but just every once in a while be like but it's perfect now mm -hmm. no you've ruined no actually you've made it even better actually, there's i didn't even know happening. to do that yeah, yeah. <laughs> watching luke when he draws it's it's the same oh, thing i can imagine yeah it's it's i have to be very cognizant that i'm not being a bad partner uh because i will walk behind his desk and uh he'll be drawn away at something and i will just end up just staring, staring. yeah that's fair yeah I mean, in, in that creepy way. Props to Luke, cranking out some awesome comics too. Yeah, and 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 props to Dylan for helping out with yeah. with getting some of the uh, with helping to write. But yeah, mm -hmm. he, I love. I mean, I could talk about Luke all day, <laughs> and go. I am not at all biased. Truth, I have one of his comics as my background. On my computer. Oh, on your computer. Mm-hmm. Okay, I immediately started looking at your background. I'm like, I see this back no, no, no. dragon and Yoda and Groot <laughs> and other things. Yeah, no, I have the uh, card pulling from the deck of many. The frog pulling from a card from the deck of many. Okay. Uh, Techie just said something that I should have realized at the beginning of the stream, and I did not, what? but it's amazing. Mykonid, it's almost a happy little tree. <gasps> right? The happy little fun guy. <laughs> yeah, the happiest of fun guys. Yay. Happy little fun guy. How did I not even think about that? That's oh my God, th thank you. Yes, thank that you. made my day. That made my day. So now you can really see the textures coming out on our buddy. On my Mikey here, Ike. Ah, oh, these ribs. Ah, these ribs. Uh -huh. Why ribs? Why? Why you gotta be so ribby? Ribby? Why? Why you gotta be under an armpit? Because pose. <laughs> the things that I say the, that are D&D &D things. <laughs> this, why, why do your ribs have to be under an armpit? Be, be, because of... That's where they go. That's where ribs happen? Because the hip oh. bones connected to the... <laughs> there you go. Uh, so this is where it now sits with the brown. So it almost looks like a creamy highlight going on. Oh, I got to get a little bit more on the back of the cap. I see what you did there, and that's super yeah. cool. Yeah, get the get texture it, getting, happening. Yeah, and getting that kind of yeah. ridge up the back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're just really short trees. Garson. And soon very, very colorful trees. Yes. Well, for the one, for sure. I've got a little bit of schmucks on right. my cap. There nice. We go. Okay, so hmm. Mikey's going to go and dry some more. This hey. is like the Raven version of painting. Never more. Try some more. <laughs> and we're going to go straight to white now for Mike. All right. No. <laughs> what? There's this fantastic comment uh, by Ufflen, Ufflen? Ufflen. OG. It is a Bob Ross emote. Emoji. And oh. happy little Mike. Where is he going? We don't know. And that's okay. That's okay. My heart. Oh, my heart. I love that. All right. I need to find out where this uh, pixel bob. Aw. Nice. So, okay. So he said straight to white. Straight to white. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with Mike and use the white very lightly um, to bring out that last little bit of texture. So with Mike, Mike gets it all. With Mikey, Mike is going to get the white along just the body. Avoiding the cap, avoiding the ground. Okay. That's the plan. But same dry brushing technique just same at this point. Same dry brushing technique, yep. Awesome. Yep. So here I go with, see, I test on my hand. That's just what I do. Here I go in now. And All right. it's going to add just that little bit more lift to the detail. when you go in with the pure white and i'm actually focusing it on the edges of the cap right now oh okay yeah oh that's super cool mm -hmm. 
like literal highlighter that mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. it do that uh see now i really wish that i could show this off i'm i'm so excited about the way that that cap just happened i will take more nice pictures. yes take i will pictures, just... share in the discord all that goodness yeah i'll do the same i'll take pictures and share in discord too and if you're painting with us even if you do it later on get over to the discord share. yeah 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 <laughs> Let us see. Let us see. Absolutely. Oh, da -da -da -da. Now let me see uh, if we had any more questions. Oh, good point. And about 10 minutes left. Yeah. <laughs> J-Dog asks, minis on community uh, D&D. Community um, so I did a, a stream earlier this week that was a special stream because we were doing the, the Fenris Days of Streaming mm -hmm. that uh, was an hour long and I played D&D &D with the chat, which was super fun. Oh, fun. Yeah, we, we um, helped. A, it took a while for them to realize what was going on, but uh, the, the chat was hunting down a thief that they watched steal from a nobleman and then, and then things got more complicated. Uh, so if you watch the VOD, you'll see what happens. Um, but I, so I did have a second camera for that so that when we had to roll, mm -hmm. um, I, I had a dice cam. Oh, um, fun. Yeah. And we kept it, I kept it really simple. Uh, I, I have a, a way that I can introduce new players to D and D and where I, I don't even bother with character sheets or anything. And mm -hmm. so it's Smart. just some, it's, yeah, it just keeps the, a lot of the math out of it. And so yeah. when we do have to roll, cause rolling is fun. Yes. Math, not always not fun. Much. Yeah. Not so so the way that I do it is um, you just roll a d20, and if you get a double digit, you win. You mm -hmm. succeed, and a single digit, you fail. Oh, and okay. as we get deeper into the game, um, if you can give me a reason why you might have advantage on something. Um, so yeah, so that's that's fun to do. Mm -hmm. um, minis could be fun to show off, but mm -hmm. I don't think I'd want to get into like uh, minis and terrain and all of that specifically for community D and D because yeah. so much of that is interacting with the chat. And then also I, I only got an hour <laughs> and it also <laughs> takes up a lot of space and it gets to be time consuming with reset. Yeah, absolutely. So, so it's a little, I, yeah, I love the idea. I would love no, to, be to be able to bust out all sorts of stuff, but I think for an hour long stream like that, mm -hmm. probably not, but you know i will i will keep that idea in the future um for you know maybe if we get to do a community D, &D that's a little longer mm -hmm. or that is um that is more of like a dungeon crawl and where i can have stuff oh, set yes. up ahead of time yes that would be cool that would be a lot man with all the black and white on this on this one he's almost looking skeletal this almost looks like right? a mike and it decided to go to a halloween party and yeah. wear the skeleton outfit yeah but the cool thing is is once we start putting the color washes on this it becomes something completely different it is such a neat effect Ooh. now we only have a few minutes left yes. i see so uh is there any last minute advice for anybody who say they've been watching the stream and mm -hmm. they haven't been painting along because they didn't have any of the stuff, but now they're thinking about, you know, grabbing everything and, and joining us next week. Is there one piece of advice you'd like to give to those people as they join us on this journey? Uh, if you are liking what you're seeing, you have plenty of time to, even if you just paint one of these myconids, you can jump into painting along with us next week. That'll be totally cool. Or even if you miss getting to paint with us because you don't have a chance to get all the supplies in time, Make sure you watch next week because what you're going to see happening from today into what we're doing next week, that's really where some fun things happen. And it's techniques that'll be helpful for you just to get a sort of feel for how everything works um, so that you can jump in and try it on your own from the comfort of your home type of exactly. situation. Yeah. And once again, if you want to find out any of the stuff that we've been using specifically for this many, mm -hmm. uh, for this mini, for this many minis, this many go minis. to... That's all the mini minis. The Go mini to our Discord at discord.gg slash idle champions. Yes. We have a paint and slay channel that has a pinned, uh, it's not a tweet. I almost called it a pinned tweet. It's got a pinned message. <laughs> and you can get the, the list of everything in specific that we are using. And yeah, if you've been painting along, even if you've been painting your own mini and you've been learning some of these techniques that V has been teaching us, uh, join us in that channel and show off 
show off what you've been doing show, show off what you've been face. yeah yeah uh, at any skill level if you are new to mini painting if you are a, a, a oh, an probably. old vet yeah if yeah show off your mini paintings and we will be I'm just I, I just realized as we were talking I saw like in between the legs I missed a spot yes <laughs> and so I'm like happen. wait mm. hold on hold on but and yeah this uh, is just the white going on the body portion ah yeah so that would be what would be next with yep. uh our our brown our brown yep. with the mikey and the ike i'm gonna see if i but can I get this do. done before the end of the stream we've got a, a few a more minutes bit. before we got to get off so that uh garwar can go do yes. awesome things absolutely so i'm basically uh, for the cap i'm just taking a little bit of the white and going around the edges and also highlighting those brows again but that is with one last round of the white on mikey Ah, Mikey likes it. Yeah, he likes it. He really he likes, likes it. it. Mikey likes it. But this there is There you go. Where... That's how you know. That's how you know we're yes. all old. This is like, that's, yep. that's a yep. reference. This is where we stand with these two. Hey. I'm still working on my brown, but but uh, Mike is nice. looking. I'm pretty happy. Yeah. I'm pretty happy. I may spend another five minutes and take care of the rest of this brown, oh, and, then, uh, and then I'll take a picture. But uh, we do, unfortunately, have to go. Have to get going. Yep. Yeah, thank you, V. Thank you. I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait to see how these start coming out next week. <laughs> yep, and, and I only got paint on me intentionally. Exactly. That's, hey, that's an accomplishment. You just leveled up. Hey. hey leveled up. And I did not get paint in my drink. So cheers unto you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and everyone stick around. Else. Ooh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, everyone else, thank you for joining. It's so great to see all the comments coming up in the chats, too. <laughs> Absolutely. And stick around for Garwar's Guide to Everything, where Garwar is going to be doing a guide to everything. Absolutely everything, I'm Perfect. sure. And we'll see you next encounter. Yay. Bye, everyone.